Hi, and welcome to episode number 199 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping passion-led online entrepreneurs and business owners learn how to use social media as a tool to grow your business. I'm your host, Andrea Jones, and I'm fiercely committed to helping you understand both the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can create connection, build community, and make your difference in the world. This show is brought to you by Syndable, which is the all-in-one social media manager tool that my agency uses every single day to schedule our posts and analyze our results. You can try them out for yourself by going to onlinedrea.com slash syndable. And I'll actually put that link in the show notes. And all of our links are going to be in the show notes today. You can find those at onlinedrea.com slash 199. Now, I'm super excited to bring on today's guest when we saw her application come through and the massive growth she's experienced in her business and her um, agency. We knew that we wanted to bring this expertise to you all. It's going to be a lot of fun. Today's guest is Becca Booker. Becca received a double major in marketing and journalism from Barrett, the Honors College at ASU, and now lives under the sun in Phoenix, Arizona. Shortly after graduating, Becca created her business and quickly became a respected entrepreneur in the Valley. Dubbed the modern social media queen by AZ Foothills, Becca is revolutionizing the social media game and inspiring brands use innovative tactics to grow their social media. She also is a loving dog mom, totally relate to that, Uh, Jojo the Healer Mix, and yes, Jojo has an Instagram account. Um, Becca, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You are so charismatic. Do you have a background in broadcast? I was a theater minor in okay, university. I totally can tell. Like your animation, <laughs> your cadence is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And um, I've been making videos since 2007. So for okay. me, it's just like years of practice. My first bit videos were, were terrible. So here we are. So, practice sorry, makes practice. Practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but let, let's get to know you better. So you like what jump started you into the world of social media? Oh, OK. We'll start from the beginning. I was one of those kids who um, whose parents like basically gave them unlimited internet and computer time. (laughs) And I would always custom code my MySpace profile, like, you know, even in like middle school, high school. And at the time, you know, I never saw that as like a career path, but that was definitely kind of like the building blocks for my interest in social media. Like I basically use like clickbait techniques. Do you remember like MySpace discussion board or bulletin posts? I think it's what they were called. (laughs) I would use like clickbait to get people to click on them and reply. Like social media management has just become very natural to me. And then when I got to college, I um, was majoring in marketing. And then it turned out I was going to graduate early and I didn't want to. I was having way too much fun. So I was like, I think I'm going to add on journalism, and which was like journalism slash PR. And I didn't really realize it at the time, but that was like the perfect recipe for working in social media, you know, like yeah. kind of the micro journalism component of caption writing and storytelling mixed with strategy and business of a marketing degree was like, it was perfect. Like everything I've done has led me here to this career and it's great. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that, you know, you kind of mix the two because especially now people go to social media for their news. Like that's, yeah, that's a news exactly. source. <laughs> Exactly. That's so, exactly what any social media post really is. It's somewhat newsworthy, right? So yes. it's really fun. Beautiful. And and so once you once you graduated and did all that, did you ever think about, you know, joining another agency or did you dive right into building your own business? Okay, so I have an interesting story here. So all through college, I like had pretty great internships lined up within social media and marketing and sales and PR. Like I did a little taste of everything. Um, but really my passion came down to social media management. But then um, I feel like a lot of people think this, especially coming out of a business school, you feel this societal pressure to get a job at a Fortune 500 company with a 401k. Those are really the only companies that are showing up to career fairs anyways. Like the kind of pool they throw you into when looking for jobs wasn't, I wasn't getting exposed to a lot of agencies at that time, or even like roles specific to social media management. I remember interviewing for one 
and the salary like came out to it was like ten dollars an hour. You know, like it was I was just like, there's no way. And yes, there was like some sort of bonus structure involved, but uh, it just wasn't like practical for me to pursue as a recent grad. And so I ended up taking a job at Target. And as a young 20 something, I was like, I love Target. I love shopping at Target. What could go wrong? <laughs> um, but I was really unhappy. I basically wasn't doing anything related to marketing or social media management. My title was ex- Executive Team Lead of Guest Experience. And so I was more so on like the customer experience side of the Target equation. Um, I was working 50 hour weeks. I had to work every other weekend. Like I really had, and when I did have free time, I wasn't, I, I told myself, I like, I'd stay up to date with social media trends or get a freelance gig or something. Like I just had no time. I was really unhappy. My hair was falling out. I started seeing a therapist. I got blood work done. And the conclusion was just like, you're really stressed. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of defeating after coming off of so many successful internships in college related to marketing and then taking that first like adult job and feeling awful at it. Um, but of, of course, like looking back, this was such a blessing in disguise. Like it was just like a pivot, like, okay, Becca, you thought society was going to tell you this, but that's not the path for you. And so I actually quit within like three months without a job lined up. And that was scary. Um, but I scrambled really quickly. I got a job working part time as actually an editorial assistant working on a blog at like a local online business. Um, that's no longer around, but it was called Blogettes. You might have heard of it. Yeah. Um, I remember them. It, yeah. I was, I, long story short, I started there, um, ended up within a year being part time, um, going from part time editorial assistant to their marketing director. And so again, it was just weird, like, you know, it's almost like these signs telling you like, okay, this is what you're meant to do. But it was also weird going from feeling like rock bottom to like, I'm at the highest level marketing position at this like startup in a short amount of time. And so I really like that um, company was kind of like at the forefront of online trends and blogging and social media management. So I learned a ton and like learned a lot about entrepreneurship while I was there. But I, again, like wasn't making a ton of money. I started doing some social media freelance on the side. And what kind of like tipped me to consider full, uh, freelancing full time was I took a Facebook advertising course, which I was just like, wow, especially that was like, I think 2017 when at the time, the only people who knew Facebook advertising management, I felt like were nerdy white men in their forties. <laughs> and so here I could bring to the table, like, you know, this lifestyle element and trendiness. And, you know, I was just like a different demographic for small business owners, especially female small business owners to consider working with. And that was like, okay, I think I need to pursue this full time. Um, And I hired basically like a therapist to help me quit my job. (laughs) I had like a lot of scarcity mindset around that and money. And, you know, that's a very scary decision. Um, I also read like the You're a Badass book, like did kind of everything mentally to prepare myself. And then um, just like went for it, hit six figures in that first year. That was like my goal. And I couldn't believe I did it. But also at the same time, I was working myself to the ground. And so I realized I needed to start hiring. Um, and within a year, we rebranded to or from like Becca, the freelancer, basically to Homemade Social, which is our agency name now. And we work with a variety of small to medium sized lifestyle brands on their social campaigns, advertising campaigns. And now we also offer like email and SMS marketing and photography. So long story short, here we are. (laughs) I love it. And I love the evolution of um, your journey and how you kind of learn the skills that you needed to as you went and, and, you know, working somewhere like the blog ads really gave you that perspective. Um, so diving into your recent success, one of the things that stood out to me about um, the pitch that you sent us was that you, you experienced this massive growth on your agency account in um, Q4 of 2020. So talk us through that strategy um, and, and what happened, what changed for you as a business owner? 
Yes. One word, Reels. <laughs> we were definitely an early adapter to the Reels platform. And honestly, I was just like having fun with it. Um, we kind of are unique in our agency demographics in that we kind of have like two ideal personas. We obviously have like the ideal social media management client who will pay us to manage their social media. But we've also with time become this resource and have offered like courses and downloads for other social media managers as well. And obviously, there's a lot more people in that secondary bucket than there are in the first. And so I started making these reels around September 2020 related to kind of like the frustrations of being a social media manager, just like poking fun, like, you know, all fun and games. And it, people went crazy for it. Like one of our reels almost has a million views. Um, just again and again, we kept like seeing these huge viral videos happen. And I, like, really, I wasn't even planning for it. And we went from having about 5,000 Instagram followers in... September of 2020 to we hit 10,000 in February 2021. So it was incredible. And we're now we're like 400 followers away from 20k. So the like momentum has continued to build and it's just it's been really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, that means you're a pretty early adopter cuz Reels wasn't a thing before August 2020, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So like we I kind of just started repurposing what I had been doing on TikTok. And I honestly, I didn't really have a strategy behind it. I was just having fun. And I think that's why it was fruitful because where you invest your energy, like people can tell if you're having a good time or not. And I think that was really key. Like I used to do these weekly IG lives, just as like a social media manager. It felt like a practice what you preach kind of thing. Like I should go live once a week and be there for my community. But my energy was not around that at all. Like I felt like I was kind of getting used. I was giving advice for free. And I just stopped doing those. And it, again, kind of like flipped the switch and the game and um, allowed me to put my energy into things that were more fruitful for us. It's great. You mentioned something that a lot of people ask us, which is this idea of giving away content for free. Um, What would you say is the difference between, you know, the content that you were delivering in the Instagram lives versus the content that works for Instagram reels? Good point. So the difference was I was allowing those IG lives to be a Q and a, and that was like on me. And that I've always been a preacher of like, never ask someone if you can pick their brain. I think it's, I think it's rude. <laughs> like I'll just say, I think it's rude to ever ask someone that. And I was basically allowing people to do that. Like I was saying, I was basically like giving a free 20 minute to 30 minute session of my week for people to pick my brain. And I didn't know what questions necessarily would be asked until I'd hop on that live. And so I'd be kind of put in this awkward situation and in situations where like it really should have been a consultation for someone. Like I would need more information out of their you know, about their account, about their demographic to give them a good response. And so I just leave the, that free information that's on our blog. You can go to our blog for that. You can get free downloads on our website. Like we offer plenty of free information, but if you want like the customized um, expertise, honestly, it's something that like I now encourage consultation bookings for and I only offer three a month. So it's like, you know, I'm at my limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind and all of this growth that you're experiencing, what, what changed in your business? You know, you talked about bringing on um, new courses and things like that. Talk us about, talk to us about, you know, the difference between having 5,000 Instagram followers and 20,000 Instagram followers and what difference that actually makes in your business. Yes. Okay. So one thing we took from that growth is we then created a course on Reels called Real Talk. So it's kind of like spamming Reels and TikTok. So it's like R-E-E-L-T-O-K, like kind of fun. <laughs> um, so we created that course around it because we were getting starting to get questions like, how have you done this? How do you see so much growth? Um, and in doing that, we also have a freebie that I believe will link in the show notes. It's our 30 Days of Reels content. And it just has Reels ideas for 30 days straight. Like nothing complex, nothing hard. It gives you a topic and you can easily film it in like five to 10 minutes and post. 
But that was um, obviously like a really great point of growth. But it also just served as social proof for our agency. Like when social media leads would come to us wanting to book us for our services, they now saw um, we, that we had a more established following, that we had a really engaged following, that we were on the cusp of um, adopting early techniques into our social media management strategy. So it kind of had like two benefits there. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. The social proof and the practicing what you preach, actually doing yeah. it. So when you bring it to your clients, they kind of can see what's possible. I like yeah. that. Um, I'm curious about your own strategies today. You know, when it comes to creating reels, one of the biggest questions we get is the amount of time it takes to create the reel. So I'd be curious to know, you know, especially now that you have a team, what's your approach to creating that content consistently and how much time does it take you? Okay. So I'll be fully transparent and honest. I go through waves of creativity when it comes to reels. I used to be really good about batch working them. I would like bookmark audio files or ideas and then just like record three or four in a day, like on days, kind of like today when like maybe I already had to have hair and makeup done and I felt, you know, camera ready. Um, I made it my goal for January 2020 to film a TikTok every day and then, you know, repurpose to reels. I maybe filmed six. Like, so I wanted to do a, at least film one Monday through Friday. So I did like a 33% type success there. Cause it's, a, it's a lot. Like it does take a lot of time and effort to film one. And you, it's hard to incorporate the amount of takes you'll need, the editing time. And so I'm going to go back now that it's, we're filming this in February. I'm going to go back to my batch working style. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with like, I, honestly, I even encourage like the spur of the moment idea is like when you see one and you feel inspired by it and you have the capacity to film it, do it because there's no better time to like energetically film than when you're like excited to do it. Um, but don't force yourself to do it. I, just stick with the batching and don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, totally agree. I'm the same way where I go in waves and mm -hmm. I do like TikTok's editor better than Reels. Do you find, hey, do you find yes. that? Yes. I'm so glad you said that. I have so much prefer to film in TikTok and then repurpose it as a Reel. Yeah, same here. I find Reels can be kind of glitchy too sometimes where you're editing and then suddenly it glitches and the whole video's gone. <laughs> and um, have you seen the SnapTik.app website? You no, know that I it? haven't. Okay, I've heard I'll of it. Um, there's a website and it really only works on Safari. It works on mobile or desktop, but all you need is the URL of the TikTok you just posted. You paste the link into snaptick.app and it'll let you download it without the TikTok watermark. So you can upload it to Reels natively, essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think there are a few tools that do that as well. Um, if you just Google it, you'll probably, you'll probably yeah. find it. You'll probably yes. find it. Cool. Um, and the other like little tidbit I'll give too is sometimes you can find the same sound. So mm. what we do is when you download from TikTok, when you're uploading it to Instagram without the watermark, try to find the same sound if you can, yeah. so that it's now you know collected with those with those sounds. Are, I think yeah. even. I might be making this up, but I think that Instagram has started to automatically match audios for you. I yeah. remember getting a notification where it was like, did you mean, to, or like, do you want it to be labeled as this audio? It looks like this is what you use. So they might be rolling that out. I love it. I, I love the innovation, truly. <laughs> Finally, we're getting what we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I want to ask you about that because Instagram has been really committed in the past six months to keeping it updated with Adam Aceri's, you know, he gives an update almost every week, it feels like. Mm -hmm. What do you think is coming next for Instagram? Okay. So I think what's going to be, well, what's going to continue to be big is video, but Instagram, it seems like they're trying really hard in the new year to be a big shoppable commerce platform. So if you're e-com or if you're able to, you know, sync any of your online products with your Facebook shop, do it. I think clients are seeing lots of engagement rate increases on their shoppable posts. But secondarily, Instagram, I think is really trying to reward their creators and get their, get creators to spend more time creating an Instagram rather than filming in TikTok and reposting in Reels. 
And so if you are a creator, um, that sign up for their creator fund. Actually, I don't even know if that's what they're calling it. I think that's what TikTok calls it. But you can basically make money for making reels. Um, it's a really great avenue to consider. I don't think people are going to be making millions. But it's a really interesting platform to explore, especially if you're already creating content. Like, Why not make some money from it? Um, so, but what does that mean for like a brand, right? Like, are they going to necessarily sign up for like creator funds? I don't think so, but that just goes to show that consumers go where creators go, not necessarily where brands go. So mm. I'm hoping that the consumers will follow the creators and brands will benefit as well. I like that consumers go where creators go because I think that is interesting or it's rare that someone wants to follow a brand per se, right. unless well, that brand. Ha- yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I think it, it will be interesting to see how this changes the landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm curious, you know, cause you do this a lot for your clients and we have a whole segment of our audience that does this for their clients as well. One of the challenges right now is getting your clients to participate on Reels. So talk us through how you encourage your clients to do that from filming to, you know, participating in trends. Do you upload it for them? You know, how do you, a lot of our clients are like, I don't have time for this. So talk Um, us through that whole process. Okay. I think what we should do first is like validate them because it is really hard. Like... (laughs) It's almost like Instagram Reels are like a mini YouTube now. Like it's much obviously easier than a YouTube video, but it it still feels like that complex. It's like a full fledged video at this point. But um, especially for personal brands, which I would assume a lot of your audience is kind of like falling into that category, like coaching and um, you know them being the face of their brand. I'm a big proponent of just like encouraging them. Like if we are managing your in your stories, like you have full reins to do whatever reels you want in complementary to our posts. Like I, I will help guide them. I'll send trending audios their way in our newsletter each week. We have like a trending audio of the week for um, clients to consider utilizing. But um, it's hard. And for product based businesses, we kind of deal with it separately because we we have essentially the bandwidth to do some filming for them. But for my fellow social media managers out there, I would recommend... I know that you probably do like base rates for your social media services, like a flat monthly fee. For reels, I would recommend charging by the hour. Like how many hours you film and edit. Because as you know, like some reels can take you like 3 hours to edit and some can take 20 minutes. And you don't want to dig yourself into a, a hole... Um, so that's, that's kind of how we're going about managing it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's just so new to our industry that we're all kind of figuring it out. So I love to like pick other people's brains. Like, what are you doing? I was wondering what you do with yours. Is it similar? Yeah. So it depends. Um, a lot of our clients are okay with just talking to the camera, which is a trend in the coaching space anyways. So, you know, talking to the camera and then we'll put like a sound in the background, you know, turn the volume down low. Um, if it's a trend, we'll like bookmark the sounds for them and Mm -hmm. give them ideas. Like here's the trend. Here's kind of what we were thinking and then try to coach them on filming. But we still run into the issue of like, we want this posted on Tuesday. We try to get them to film it save it as a draft and then post it on Tuesday. And it's a lot of work for the client. <laughs> so yeah, There isn't that capability for like shared drafts amongst devices, yes. yeah, which I is know. a huge pain for all social media managers. That's like my next, I wish I could like write a love letter to like Instagram with my wish list. Yes. Like, should we com- as a community write one? And sign it, and like you know, like crowdfund this. Yes, <laughs> or, you know when people like sign petitions. <laughs> Yes, please allow shared drafts to yes. all of the people who have access to the account. That would really help us exactly. out. Thanks, Instagram. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um. Thank you so much. It's been such a great interview. I want to uh, circle back to the Reels ideas. Tell us more about these Reels ideas, and I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. I love it. So um, in the 30 days, there are ideas 
kind of to get you started? Like how to introduce yourself? Is that we also include like an audio to introduce your team, how to um, give a re- overview of your product or services, doing a day in the life, showing behind the scenes of a special process that's unique to you and your business. So we provide resources, whether you're a product based business or a service provider, so that you can kind of make it work either way. But um, I won't give away all of the 30 ideas, but um, I would just recommend like it's free. It's a great tool to just get your mind jogging, even if every idea like isn't necessarily the perfect fit for your brand. It'll it'll help. So I would just recommend starting there. Beautiful. And I'll put that link in the show notes, onlinedrea.com slash one nine nine. Becca, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Andrea. It was so nice talking to you. I hope to chat again soon. Yes, for sure. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in to another episode of the Savvy Social Podcast. Head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Leave us a review. It helps keep us in the top 100 marketing charts. And that's all thanks to you, dear listener. We love your support for the show. The next episode is episode 200. And I've got a special treat for you. So definitely tune in. We release episodes every Tuesday. I will see you then. Bye for now.